On this week's episode of Capital City Sports, the men's soccer team has their first round of the NCAA tournament as they take on Furman. Football is back in action at williams Bryce Stadium as they take on the Citadel. Women's volleyball has their game Friday night against Mississippi State, and we have a sit-down feature package with two of the players on the women's volleyball team. This is Capital City Sports. Welcome to this week's episode of Capital City Sports. I'm your host, Nick Jones. The men's soccer team advanced to the NCAA men's soccer tournament for the 21st time in program history. John Wagner is at Stone Stadium with the highlight. It's Thursday night here at Stone Stadium, and the South Carolina men's soccer team is back home to play against the Furman Paladins in the first round of the NCAA tournament for men's soccer. The Gamecocks are undefeated at home this year here at the graveyard, and they look to maintain that record here today. Furman made their way all the way from Greenville County up in the upstate with these 90s long sleeve uniforms here Thursday night to take on the Gamecocks. And early on, here's their first opportunity. Marco Ortiz coming flying into the box right side. Going to put one up. William Pyle's going to make that dive. And that's going to go out of bounds. The next possession for the Gamecocks. And then the attacking third, that end swinger comes in. Diving attempt goes out of bounds. And then last shot before the half, Eric Staber passes off to Marco Carrizales for the shot. Wide left of pile once again. And then 60th minute, finally a breakthrough. Danny Deacon gets control of the ball just on the other side of midfield, driving down the wing, coming into the box, finding some space, and boom, bottom corner. That's a goal for the Gamecocks. 1-0 South Carolina looking to wrap things up and move on the playoffs. And they thought they had it wrapped up, but the Paladins had other ideas. Kyle McLagan right here, he's going to try to take it into the box. Ooh, escaped a foul. And he's going to send it into Lewis Hawk. Pops one opposite side. Pass pile. Ties the game in the 90th minute. The traveling contingent of Paladins on their feet going nuts for their team as their season is kept alive. Three football fans. Two periods, 10 minutes apiece. Sudden death. Here's the best opportunity either, had, either Ten, team had in those nine, 20 minutes. Eight, Bouncing the ball seven, around. Just trying to put six, up shots. Trying to five, put something in the back of the net. Four, no three. dice. And Two, time runs out on one, that shot right there, zero. and we're going to the spot to try and decide. It. First up, Torger Naibo is going to face the Furman goalie, and that's top left corner. That's 1 0 South Carolina. Next up, Adrian McInnes, the Furman. And once again, right past Pyle, that's 1 1. Danny Deacon, the hero earlier, no dice on this attempt. Still 1 1. Eli Penner here, he's going to get stopped just as well, and it's still 1 1. And then Mark Burson and his team nervous on the sidelines, locked up arm in arm. Curtis Turner here, sealing the deal. Bottom left corner, and there will be no more. Marco Ortiz gonna try and keep his team alive. No dice, over the crossbar. And William Pyle's gonna go celebrate with his team. Shirts are flying, everybody's emptying off the benches. South Carolina has kept their season alive. And move on with the final score of 1-1 one, one on the books, 2-1 to one on the penalty kicks. Full time here at Stone Stadium and the Gamecocks come away with a victory on penalties. 1-1 will be the score on the on the books, but the Gamecocks put it away from the spot 2-1 through five rounds. It was an exciting matchup. The Gamecocks played tough all game, but the Paladins put away a late game thriller almost near the 90th minute to take things to overtime. No one scored there and they took it to penalties. Uh, there were lots of opportunities, fouls. It was an exciting game, everything you could ask for in a match. Uh, ultimately, however, the Gamecocks would come away with a victory, and they'll head next week for round two of the playoffs in UC Santa Barbara out in California. And for Capital City Sports, I'm John Wagner. This week, the women's volleyball team will have their final home games of the regular season here in Columbia. We'll send it over to Lauren Schwartz, who's at the Carolina Volleyball Center. It's senior night here at the Carolina Volleyball Center and seniors Darian Dozier, Sarah Blomgren and Elizabeth Jombel are pumped up and ready for their final night game at home. The Gamecocks are coming up a strong 3-0 win over Tennessee but haven't played a match in over a week so we'll see if they can stay hot tonight against Mississippi State. The Gamecocks jumped out to a quick lead over the Bulldogs in the first set and never looked back. 
The Bulldogs' defense was no match for the Gamecocks' offense, and they won the first set 25-18. The second set wasn't as easy as the first, though, and both teams were evenly matched throughout. There are three lead changes and six tie scores in the set. The two teams scored back and forth, staying neck and neck until the Gamecocks finally started pulling away and ended up winning the set 25-16. The third set started out being a close one again. The Gamecocks offense began to give them a comfier lead, but the Bulldogs fought back and made it a tight game near the end of the set. The Gamecocks ultimately came out on top of the set 25-19, giving them a 3-0 sweep of the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Three of the key players for the Gamecocks were the three seniors, Darian Dozier, Sarah Blomgren, and Elizabeth Jomble. Darian Dozier has had a record season and her play tonight showed it as she had nine kills and four blocks. Sarah Blomgren led the team in kills with 14 in addition to having four digs. Elizabeth Jomble was also strong offensively and defensively and had five kills. It was a well-rounded win for the Gamecocks tonight at the Carolina Volleyball Center. There will be a big hole to fill with the loss of the three seniors who have all made such a huge impact on their time with the team. The Gamecocks have their final game at home on Sunday afternoon against Alabama and hope to end on a high note here in Columbia. For Capital City Sports, I'm Lauren Schwartz. This week I sat down with volleyball players Darian Dozier and Emma Locke to draw comparisons between being a freshman and senior collegiate athlete here at the University of South Carolina. It's been hard to kind of stay on top of things and if you procrastinate then you totally get piles up. Yeah, it piles all up. All your work it piles, piles up. up and then you're doing it all one right, night. Right, exactly. It's not good. Adjusting to college life can be tough for students, but it can be even more overwhelming for student athletes. Well, I knew coming into it that it would be volleyball all the time. Like I was so ready for that and I knew that that's what I wanted. For freshmen like Emma Locke, starting out your collegiate career as a student athlete is an exciting time. One aspect that can be challenging for freshmen is time management between classes and practice. It just, the only thing that's different, I didn't expect to be this tired all the time. Like if I'm not in the gym or studying, it's sleeping or just kind of hanging out. It's really, that's not what I expected. I had to get a lot of tutors <laughs> for classes like accounting and um, stat. Senior Darian Dozier learned that keeping her schoolwork organized kept her ahead of the game in the classroom. And I really had to put in an extra effort to have all my schoolwork organized before I was going to practice so that after I knew exactly what I was going to do. Coming into her freshman year, Locke is focusing on her volleyball career at South Carolina. But meanwhile, Dozier is looking ahead to life after college. It's made me realize that there are other things in volleyball like I now I'm looking for a job and trying to figure out what I'm going to do but that volleyball has definitely helped me and just being a student athlete I think has helped me to prepare for the next part of my life and whatever I decide to do. I think that's how my perspective has changed. I wasn't really thinking of those things as a freshman. Dozier's perspective may have changed since being a freshman but she wouldn't have changed anything that has happened while she's been in school. I've learned a lot about discipline, organization, you know, time management, all that stuff. Um, but just like the people that I've met at my time here, I've met so many different people and I wouldn't change it for anything. Nick Jones reporting for Capital City Sports. This Saturday, the South Carolina Gamecocks take on the Citadel Bulldogs at williams Bryce Stadium at high noon. We're joined with analyst Brian Principe. So, Brian, what is the keys and what are South Carolina looking for for this weekend's game? Well, a little bit of history for this game. The last time the Gamecocks have lost to an FCS team was actually the Citadel 25 years ago. So the Gamecocks are trying to avoid that same fate that a lot of fans in the stadium will remember that 38-35 loss to the Bulldogs in 1990. So this isn't the typical game that South Carolina is going to expect leading into the Clemson game. This could be a different animal that the Gamecocks will have to deal with in the Citadel. They do run the triple option, which the Gamecocks will have to find a way to defend. And this Gamecock team averages 202 yards given up on the ground, which is second to worst in the SEC. And the Citadel averages 344 yards in the SOCON uh, rushing the ball on the ground. So the Gamecocks have to find a way to, to stifle that rushing attack from the Citadel because that's what they're going to get all game at williams Bryce Stadium. Yeah, the triple option is definitely hard to defend. Uh, obviously, they're going to run the ball a whole lot, and that really just gives limited opportunities to whoever team they're facing, which in this case, South Carolina, on the offensive side of the ball. So South Carolina's got to make sure that they definitely score every time they touch the ball. And, you know, historically, most teams from the FCS, if they run the triple option, they, they give the, the big teams a problem. For some reason, it's just 
It's, it's just hard to defend. So it should be pretty interesting. So, Brian, what would be your prediction for this week's game? Well, I'm going to go with, uh, with a South Carolina win. I think that they do find a way to stifle the offense for the Citadel. I'm going to say 28-17, to 17, the Gamecocks do win. And then a week from today, they'll have to start getting ready for that game at williams Bryce Stadium between the number one team in the country, the Clemson Tigers. So I think that this is a good way for South Carolina to prepare, but a totally different animal in the Clemson Tigers coming up in a week from today. Absolutely. Should be interesting. We're going to send it over to williams Bryce Stadium where Garrett Lash has a recap for the game. I'm down here on the field of williams Bryce Stadium where the South Carolina Gamecocks just took on the Citadel Bulldogs. Now, with the loss to Florida last week, South Carolina was eliminated from postseason play. Playing for pride today, they look to tune up against the Citadel Bulldogs, preparing for Clemson next week. South Carolina riding a disappointing 3-8 record, but they haven't lost to an FCS team in 25 years, but it was the Citadel. And the Citadel looking to prove that they're not a pushover. Second play from scrimmage, that's Cam Jackson. He's going to run all the way to the end zone, 59 yards on this touchdown. He had 106 yards on the day. The Citadel starts off strong, now up 7-0. Uh, this is the ensuing drive, and uh, if you're going to talk about the most dangerous weapon on the South Carolina Gamecocks, it would be that guy. Farrow Cooper runs for 40 on this play, which sets up Elliott Fry's 36-yard field goal. South Carolina now on the board. But the Citadel marches down the field in 13 play, and that's B-back Tyler Renew. Punches it in from 7 yards, and the Citadel is up 14-3. to On the ensuing drive, South Carolina has a 4th and 3 from its own. 40, a gutsy call, but that's a nine yard pass to Debo Samuel. Next play, 30 yards down the field, it's Jarrell Adams. He had a big day, six catches for 105 yards. Now, third and goal from the seven. Perry Orth is gonna roll out to his right. He's not gonna find anyone. He's gonna throw it out the back of the end zone. They'd settle for three and that's a huge theme of the first half, not finishing drives. They'd add another field goal, down 14 and nine at the half. In the third quarter, the Gamecocks look to start off strong, and who better to start it off with than Farrow Cooper. That is a 47-yard pass play, and here's Brandon Wilds running into the end zone on third and goal. Wilds is actually pretty tame on this day. 16 carries for 40 yards, but Carolina takes its first lead at 16 to 14. The crowd's looking for anything to cheer about. Now how about a little defense? That's Boozy Whitlow sacking Dominique Allen, and uh, Carolina getting some momentum here. Could they capitalize? Next drive, Perry Orth drops back, looks down the field, and he sees Hayden Hurst. Can't hang on. Wants a flag. He doesn't get one. Carolina would have to punt, not able to extend its lead. Now on the next drive for the Citadel, that's Dominique Allen, who only made two completions all day, but that's a great catch by Alex Glover to end the third quarter. A little bit later on the drive, in the fourth quarter now, the Citadel has fourth down and one. And Dominique Allen's going to rush forward. Does he get the yard? The refs say he does. That sets up this 48-yard field goal by Eric Goins, and it's good. Ten minutes to go in the fourth, and the Citadel's up 17-16 to in williams Bryce. The Gamecocks would waste little time in getting the lead back. Ort throws deep to Cooper and got him for 41 yards in this touchdown. Cooper, 10 catches, 191 yards, and the Gamecocks are back in front. Now, they would go for two to try to make the lead seven. Or throws it back to tackle Brandon Shell. Oh, that's disappointing. Gamecocks are only up 22 to 17, and it would prove to be costly because minutes later, that's Tyler Renew from Columbia, South Carolina. Five years ago, he was selling peanuts in williams Bryce. He goes for 56 on this play and 174 on the day. The Citadel runs for 350 yards. They didn't get the two-point conversion, but they lead by one. And with six minutes to go on fourth and one, David Williams gets none. Carolina only has 72 rushing yards. And then after downing a punt at the three, it's fourth down for the Gamecocks. Perry Orr throws a prayer, and it's Farrow Cooper. He's going to run down the sidelines into the end zone. But wait. There's a penalty flag way back of the line of scrimmage. Not all 11 players were set. It would be a false start. They'd replay the down, fourth down to the 13. And Orth's going to throw underneath to Brandon Wilds. He's going to get stopped at the 11. Orth throws for 367, but it's not enough as the Citadel comes into Willie B and stuns Carolina, their first win over an FBS program in 23 years. With a shocking defeat to the Citadel Bulldogs at home, the South Carolina Gamecocks look for answers as the top-ranked Clemson Tigers come into williams Bryce next week. With Capital City Sports, I'm Garrett Lash. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Capital City Sports. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at CCS on SGTV. 
For all of us at Capital City Sports, have a great Thanksgiving holiday, and we'll have all your coverage as South Carolina takes on Clemson next weekend.